Hey guys, welcome back to Trigger Time TV. Lewis Frost Phobus Solutions here with Tim Burke, JTAC Ranch. Today what we're gonna to talk to you about is the importance of the standing position and how it can be utilized and all the other variety of positions that we talked about in previous episodes. So what are some of the reasons, Tim, that we might find ourselves having to shoot in a standing position? Uh, you know, you could be coming out from a hunting stand or even find yourself in combat where you don't have anything to rest or, or, or use for support. Maybe you're in grass that's four feet high and the only thing you can do is bring it up and shoot offhand. Right, and this is gonna be a, a uh, shooting position of last resort. It is going to be something when you have to make that shot, it has to be done right now, so it doesn't afford us the opportunity to seek an alternate position, find some artificial support. So it's going to be something that has to be done in a hasty fashion. So understanding a lot of the dynamics of the standing position, what are some of the problems we find with the standing position? The gun does not sit still and gravity works against you. Absolutely. So one of the things that they always taught us was that we turn our powers down in order to kind of minimize that perceived wobble area because when you're driving that gun up on target, man, it's really dancing around a lot on you, which will cause you to want to snatch that trigger and make that gun go off right now, which you can't do because when you do that, what happens in that long range environment? You, go, you slap the trigger and you miss. Absolutely. So let's do this. Let's just try, try to take it into a practical application. So let's go ahead and turn around. The line will go hot. Going hot. All right. So Tim's ready. So he's preloading his body with oxygen right now because he knows he's got only got about six or eight seconds to drive that gun up on target and make that hit. Shooter ready. Breath front. All right, so he made a hit. First round hit, we're about 225 meters away. No big deal. So we'll try it again. Shooter ready. Second round hit. All right, guys, a couple of quick, quick key points that we can talk about right now is when he drove that gun up, he had a very minimal amount of time in order to make that hit. So he preloaded his body with oxygen and he allowed himself to manage that trigger and make that hit. Guys, for this or any more information, Stay tuned to Trigger Time TV. Hey folks, Charles Sumner with Glock here. Again with Trigger Time TV. Today we're gonna talk about long-term storage of magazines. One of the things you wanna do when you're putting a magazine up is make sure that it's clean, dry area where you're storing it. It's climate control where you're putting it in a safe or you're putting it in, uh, in a drawer in the house, uh, so forth. And when you're storing that magazine, one of the questions that always comes up is, do I want to store the magazine loaded or unloaded? And that's, a, that's been a topic for years as to uh, what to do about that. One of the things that I like to do, uh, I've been in law enforcement for going on 40 years. And one of the things that we did and one of the things that I see other law enforcement agencies doing is they will carry rounds in a magazine for about uh, six months, when they go to qualification, they'll shoot those rounds out and reload uh, maybe another magazine and change those, rotate those mags out. And that's one of the things that I like to do when I'm putting them up in my safe is I rotate those mags where I'll have one group of magazines that's unloaded and one group that's loaded, and I'll swap them up periodically. The other thing that I want to check on long-term storage is you'll see these two magazines here. This is an older magazine, and this is a newer magazine. And when I'm checking my magazines, one of the things I wanna see is I wanna check that magazine spring. Both of these magazines have 11 coil springs in them. And you see this one has, it extends further out than what this one does. So that makes me want to look at this one I may want to replace just a magazine spring, or I may want to just throw that magazine away and get a brand new magazine. One of the things on a magazine is if the magazine doesn't work, the gun doesn't work. So I want to make sure that when I'm storing, I'm storing where it can work properly. I'm Charles Sumner with Glock with Trigger Time TV. Thanks for watching. Hey folks, stay tuned to here with Talon Defense. You got Nate Murphy from Kinetic Development Group. Today we're here to talk about some optic mounts, the side lock mount. So KDG makes a variety of optics mounts. It's called side lock and what it does is it allows you to change optics very quickly. Uh, having used virtually every thrill ever known to man, uh, I've been disappointed by all of them. Some of them you'll see one, two, three MOA of, of drift. And what our company wanted to do is we wanted to address that and come up with a mount that was toolless 
didn't have any adjustment required uh, and allowed the user to swap out optics very quickly. So that's where we ended up with side lock. So with side lock, what you can do is you can change one optic. Uh, for this EOTech, for example, doesn't have a QD mount. So by using our universal uh, Picatinny rail uh, side lock piece, you can gain that capability. And you can change your optic out very quickly to a different, different optic. So if you want to go from uh, an urban environment where you're close in and you want a red dot, it makes sense. You move out to open country or you need precision, you take that off and add a magnified optic. That, that, that quickly and that simply. Now the important thing is, is that you have 100% return to zero. And that's something I've never experienced with any other throw lever QD mount on the market. Right, so there's a lot of good glass out there and you have a mount to cover just about everything, right? Yep, so we got the universal riser. These are really popular right now with, uh, with some army guys. Uh, one of the reasons is that, like I said, you can add, uh, add that QD capability, but also the, a little bit added height. We make it for the Trichicon RMR, we make it for the T1, T2 uh, series, which also works with the Holosun optics that are very popular, make it for the MRO. And then for the magnified optics, our mount works with a uh, one inch 30 and 34 millimeter. So if you buy a 30 and then you buy a new 34 millimeter, you can always just get new rings. Right, so that quick, uh, quick attachment system is important as we try to get more versatile with the rifle. It gives us more capabilities to swap immediately in and out, right? Yep. All right, folks, Chase Jenkins with Talon Defense here with Nate Murr from Kinetic Development Group. Check out the website for more product information. See you on the range.